Hi everyone, John Cottrell here of Embody Yoga, and this is Soft Flow Yoga. Thanks for joining me. Now in this class, we're going to be doing a pose that's called Tiger Pose. Now Tiger Pose is a very interesting posture. It's a posture where we'll be on our hands and knees. However, we'll be balancing, so using some good core work, and also creating a twist and back bend. I know it may sound confusing, but I'll guide you through it. So for our props today, you might wanna have a bolster. This is actually optional, just a nice big pillow or cushion that you can sit on if you'd like. So I just have that here. We want a couple of yoga blocks or some stackable books, something hard bound, because we will be doing some back bends. We like to use blocks to help with that. And of course, we'll need something soft to sit on. I do recommend a nice blanket or even a towel. You can even double up on yoga mats uh, together here, but I think a blanket might be helpful for this. We will be on our hands and knees. So let's go ahead and start in a comfortable seated position. Feel free to sit on your pillow or cushion or a folded blanket or towel. Feel free to cross your legs, but you don't have to cross your legs like this. I feel more comfortable sitting in a half lotus, but you can just sit with your legs crossed. This is easy pose, whatever is good for you. And you can even extend the legs out if you need to or want to. If you need a little extra back support, feel free to sit up against a wall or even in a chair for this first portion of the practice where we get into breath. So wherever you are in your comfortable seat, nice and tall, lengthening through the spine. You're going to take a nice full breath in. You're going to breathe in through your nose. You can exhale through your nose on this first time. Inhale again through your nose. This time exhale through your mouth with a sigh. I really like that because you can really feel your body relax. Let's do that again. Nice full breath in. And exhale. Good. Feel free to do that again or just go ahead and settle into just a nice easy breath in and out. Just settling into the space. We like to take this moment in stillness. This is our breathing meditation just to prepare ourselves for our practice. getting reacquainted with your breathing. We'll take some steps to get even more connected. The first thing is just to notice how your body is responding to your breath. You might just notice the rise and fall of your chest or your belly. Feeling the air move in and out. Next, listen to the sound of your breath. So if your breathing is a little soft, just turn up the volume of your breath. These two very simple things help you to be a little bit more centered, connected, aware. Let's continue to deepen this connection. Now, as you inhale, feel your breath rising upward to fill your lungs. You want to feel or imagine that your breath lives in your belly, and you have to inhale and pull it up to your heart space and feel the expansion in your lungs. Now, as best as you can, we're going to keep that uplifting sensation of the inhale. And then when you exhale, you're going to pull your belly button in towards your spine. It's creating the abdominal lock so that breath doesn't fall back down into the belly. Let's do that. try that again. Inhale, feel the breath rising upward, filling up the lungs, keeping that uplifting sensation. Exhale, pull belly in. And just keep doing that. Inhale. Exhale, draw belly button in. It's a light contraction of your abdominal muscles, creating the abdominal lock. Just really feeling your center. Now you don't have to pull too hard, just something gentle, just so you have the awareness of this portion of your body. And just continue breathing like this.
Continue to be aware of how your body is responding to your breath. Listen to the sound of your breath. The inhale to feel the breath rising, filling your lungs and heart space. The exhale connecting to your center. Let's take three more breaths like this, and then we'll add some movement. When you're ready, inhale and extend your arms out and up, reaching into the air. Big stretch, lengthening through your arms. Exhale, extend your arms out. Feel as if you're going to touch the walls on either side of the room. Finishing the exhale as the arms return down to your side. Let's do that again. Inhale, reaching out, good energy through your fingers, all the way up, reaching beyond the ceiling. Exhale, pull belly button in, arms extend out and arms come back down. And just continue moving like that, breathing at your own pace. So don't worry if you're not following me exactly. Moving at your own pace. And as you're moving in slow motion, just pay attention to what you feel in your body. Perhaps the lengthening through the sides of your body as your arms go up, the sensation in your shoulders, energy in your arms, hands, and fingers. Keep that reaching sensation. It's a stretch sensation. Don't forget to pull your belly button in towards your spine when you exhale. Go ahead and finish the breath that you're on and take two more breaths. Very good. And when you're complete, you can just let your arms rest down by your side. Hands can rest in your lap. And notice that shift, that change from the movement of the body and now stillness in the body. Return to the awareness of your breath. While still seated, let's just incorporate a mild twist. So you want to be sure you're sitting up nice and tall, good length through the entire spine. I'm going to mirror you here. Take your right hand and place it either out to the side or kind of behind you. And just kind of prop yourself up onto your fingertips. I call them spider's legs. This just makes your arms a little longer. Or your palms if that works for you. What you'll do, you'll just push into the floor to maintain a well-extended spine. Alrighty, so we're going to inhale with that sensation. Get tall. Exhale, pull belly in. Do that one more time. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, pull belly in. Now we're going to incorporate a twist. Let's just free up the left hand. Let's do that again. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, pull belly in and just start to turn a little bit to your right until you just kind of naturally stop. And when you stop, take your free hand bring it across the body and just hold on to your right thigh or knee and just hold in place here. So you may not have turned or twisted too far and that's really not the intention. Just a mild rotation so you can easily hold here. Now we're still breathing in the same fashion. We're inhaling to get nice and tall. Exhale, pull belly in but not too tightly and do that a few more times. Remember, our tiger pose is going to involve a slight twist. Two more breaths. We're going to take a third inhale, get tall. Exhale, pull belly button in, and then start to unwind and be. Begin to face forward and just bring your hands to your lap again and just hold here as the body comes back to a neutral position. Let's do the same thing other side. So left hand out to the side or slightly behind you, just at a place where you can easily push into the floor to re-extend the spine. Let's take a couple of breaths. Inhale, extend. Exhale, draw in. 
One more time, inhale, get tall, exhale, draw inward. Just ready for the twist, free your right hand, inhale, tall body. Exhale, pull belly button in and start to rotate a little bit to your left until you naturally stop. And when you've stopped, just kind of lock it in place by just bringing the hand across the body and hold on to the knee or thigh. Now I do that on purpose so that when you do rotate or twist, you're really doing that on your own. It's the musculature of the body, the rotation of the spine, and that core connection to help you twist. Because sometimes if we put the hand here first on the thigh, sometimes there can be a tendency to actually pull yourself into the rotation. And that just takes that temptation out of the equation. A couple more breaths here. You're still growing tall. I'm going to imagine there's a string attached to the top of your head and you're being drawn upward. And of course, this hand over here, the left hand is still pushing into the floor to help you sustain the length in torso. All right, coming out of the pose, breathe in first, get tall. Exhale, pull belly button in, and then unwind. The pulling in is really a way to support the body as you now put the body into motion and return to center here. For this next part, we're going to create a mild back bend. We're going to bring the hands behind us, still using our spider's legs, propped up onto fingertips. When you bring the arms back, just notice how the shoulders also draw back. This is on purpose. Just to open up the chest a little bit more. As we get into this, you're going to start to feel a light stretch right through here, okay, right through the shoulder, or the muscle engagement between the shoulder and the pectoral muscles. I'm going to tip the chin up a little. Now inhale and just push into the ground with both sets of hands. Inhale, feel the breath rise, fill up your lungs. Feel that stretch quality across the chest from shoulder to shoulder. Exhale, pull belly button in. I'm going to add a little bit more. Inhale, fill up the lungs, but also feel like your chest is rising right up towards the sky. Exhale, pull belly button in, squeeze shoulder blades together behind you, or feel as if you have a pencil running up and down your spine, and you're trying to hold on to it with your back muscles. Lots more sensation here, so feel what's happening. Notice how your body is responding to this seated back bend. Even these early poses are getting us ready for our featured pose, tiger pose. One more breath in and out. And when you're complete, just lower your chin. Walk your hands towards yourself to sit up tall. You can bring your hands into your lap again and just hold. Since we just practiced a back bend, let's do a forward fold. So if your legs happen to be crossed here, let's uncross the legs and just place the soles of the feet together. So your knees are bent. And there might be even some space between your knees and the floor, which is fine. Here you might even use your props if you have a couple of blocks or hardbound books or even some small pillows or rolled up towels. Just place them underneath the legs and let the legs literally just rest on those props there. That way you get a nice light stretch in the inner thighs. You can hold on to your ankles or shins, feet or toes, but you want to be at a place where you can easily Sit up nice and tall at the beginning of this. So breathe in, get tall. Exhale, pull belly in. As you do so, we're in motion. You're gonna send your heart and chin forward just a little bit. You might even be able to now reach your toes and you just scoop them up with your hands. Inhale, re-extend the spine at this new angle. Exhale, pull belly button in, and maybe hinge forward a tiny bit more. Now at first, I like to maintain a well-extended spine, so straight as can be, but then we'll change this up. So I'm going to inhale. As I exhale, I'm going to lower the chin and let the back round and fold a little bit more. 
allowing the back to round a little bit just gives us a little bit more space so we can fold a little deeper. Now you don't have to go too far with this pose or any pose that we practice. That's one of our things that we do in soft, in soft flow. Instead of pushing your body to 100% or even beyond that, which we have a tendency to do sometimes, even off the yoga mat, instead we're dialing it back to maybe a 60 to 70% so that you can actually feel good holding your posture. You don't feel like you're straining or pushing your body. You're not forcing yourself into any of your poses. But you're still getting a wonderful benefit. Part of that benefit is because you are, act are able to hold the posture a little bit longer. Notice the curvature of the spine, any stretch sensation down through your back. And even as you're able Breathe in deeply into your back body, just as we were kind of leaning back, creating the back bend, we're breathing into the chest, the front body. But now that we're folded forward, see if you can breathe into your back body. Notice and feel if, if you can expand your back, especially as you inhale. On the exhale, you're still pulling belly button in towards spine. Two more breaths here. After the second breath, just lift the chin a little bit to re-extend the spine, getting the neck in the same alignment as the rest of the spine. Maybe hands on the floor in front of you and just push to help hinge your way back up until you're nice and tall in your seat. And just pause here for a moment. So we just did a back bend and a forward fold. Our next pose or set of poses is cat and cow, which really incorporates the same quality of the back bend and forward fold. So let's set our blocks to the side. Let's get the legs behind us. So carefully manipulate yourself to come to hands and knees. This is where your blanket or towel will come in handy. I'm just gonna open mine up a little bit here. So I have a rectangle. So I can place my hands at one end and my knees at the other. So we're going to recreate that back bend and forward fold. Cat and cow. It starts with cow, which is a back bend. Inhale, just tip the chin up, look forward. Even feel like your heart is moving forward. At the same time, tip the pelvis back. And you're going to create that back bend and arched back. Your belly will even feel like it's moving downward towards the floor. This is cow pose. When we exhale, start with the back end and tuck the pelvis under. Feel your belly button pull up towards spine. Your back will naturally round and bring your chin to chest. There's that broadening of the back again. Reverse it, inhale, feel the pelvis tip back, belly drops, heart opens, look forward. Exhale, tuck pelvis under, belly button pulls up, rounded spine, chin to chest. Okay, that's the breakdown. Now go ahead and continue to move and flow at your own pace. Inhale when you look up or forward. Exhale when you look down and round the spine. A nice undulation of the spine. This is another posture and even body setup that's going to get us ready for our tiger pose because it is done on our hands and knees like this. But we're going to go through some other motions and postures, sequences together to really get the body warmed up before we get to our tiger pose. Finish the breath that you're on and take two more breaths. After your second breath, just come back to a neutral tabletop posture. Sometimes being in this pose can really fatigue the wrists and hands. So I like to take a little rest. So tuck the toes under and start to sit back. Walk the hands towards your knees until you can easily sit up and free your hands. And when they're free, just give them a little circle. Wiggle your fingers, even get a counter movement of the wrist. I like to do a little press 
or light pulse into the blanket very gently here, not too forced at all, okay? Just to help relieve the wrist. So whenever your wrists feel a little tired, because they will get tired in some of these yoga postures, just go ahead and sit back and massage. Okay, and let's find relief in the hands and wrists and fingers. All righty, let's go ahead and crawl off the blanket here and let's continue. We're gonna move into downward facing dog. So return to your hands and knees. We're going to step the hands forward on the mat just a little bit so the wrists move from out, out from under the shoulders. As you step forward, spread out your fingers pretty wide, like so. Even lean into the hands a little bit, some pressure into the palms. Again, it, it will affect the wrist, but, but pay attention to your flat palms. You're stretching and opening your hands. Tuck your toes under. We're going to inhale to cow pose like we did earlier. Exhale, round your spine into cat, hold cat. With that same exhale or another full breath while in cat pose, lift your knees off the mat, send your hips up into the air. Hands will naturally press into the floor. Allow your chest and head kind of sink between the arms. Now you might need to tiptoe forward a little bit or just one tiny step forward with the feet. I even took my feet a little wider on the mat. Keep the knees very bent. That'll keep the hips mobile. So do a little wag of your tail and then send your hips up into the air. And maybe your head sinks a little deeper down between the arms. Downward facing dog. One more breath. And then we'll take a little walk of the feet to the center of the mat until they're flat on the mat. And then just slide your fingertips to your toes. So you'll be in a forward fold. We're going to slightly come out of the pose. Inhale and slide your hands up to your shins or knees, only rising up halfway. And we're going to hold here on the exhale. Keep breathing. So, we want to get, so we're returning to that flat back. So you formed a nice tabletop. Be sure your feet feel solid on the ground. Keep a good bend in the knees. You're going to feel the natural engagement of the legs. And then imagined energy moving through your body through your hips and tailbone to the back of the room and through the top of your head to the front of the room. Let's finish standing by shifting weight into the heels. Bend your knees, lower your hips, lifting the chest just about here at about 45 degrees, so maintaining the length in spine. As you're able, take the arms out to the side or place hands on thighs to help stand up, push into your thighs, standing up nice and tall. And inhale, extend the arms up into the air. Get that nice stretch through the entire body. Exhale, arms come down to your side. So we've made it to our first standing position, mountain pose. Let's just pause here for a moment. Take a breath or two. Add some movement if it feels good. I like to circle the shoulders. Roll them backward a few times. Roll them forward a few times. Let's do that same movement. We're going to fold forward and then come back up. That's a half salute to the sun. All righty. Mountain pose, nice and tall. Here we go. Inhale, extend your arms out and up, reaching towards the sky. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees, and sit back into the imaginary chair. So there's our 45 degree angle in the upper body, but we're going to keep coming down. Lower your hands, feel your chest come down towards your thighs and just let everything melt at the bottom inhale slide your hands up to your shins or knees only rising up halfway forming that tabletop once again feel it's feeling solid on the ground with your feet bent knees active legs parallel to the floor now shifting your weight back into your heels bend your knees lower your hips lifting chest arms out to the side again or pressing hands into your thighs to help you stand up nice and tall reach a bit higher energy in your hands and fingers exhale arms return to your side very good and a few more circles all righty let's do another standing posture which is going to affect the shoulders and the chest and even your back i'm just going to turn this way so follow me inhale extend both arms up now exhale and just bring the arms down and as they come down you know, reach back behind you like so, as if you're reaching for the back corners of your mat. So straight arms, active hands, 
and imagine you're squeezing or holding on to something between the hands. So you're gonna feel something down through the arms. You might even feel your tricep muscles engage. And with the arms behind us, it rolls or pulls the shoulders back like we did seated. It brought the shoulders back. So we get this opening, okay? Getting the stretch and opening from shoulder to chest. We'll just hold here for a moment. One more breath. And just go ahead and relax the arms to your side. So that was very active in the hands. You might even circle the wrists here, wiggle your fingers, and you can go back to that shoulder roll. All right, some standing postures now. Let's do a variation of Warrior One and Warrior Two. Once again, standing in mountain pose, nice and tall. We'll start by softening the knees. So bend your knees a little bit. Send weight into your right foot. You're going to lean forward a tiny bit, just a bit. And you might even feel your right set of toes grip the mat so you don't fall forward. This should lighten up this left foot. I'm just lifting the heel and then just tapping the foot back until it just naturally stops right here. We're gonna open the leg, and I'm gonna mimic that with the arm. So my palm is facing in. But if I turn the arm out like that, it opens up through the chest. And do the same with the leg. So you're gonna turn the leg out and plant the heel into the floor, which centers us here. So you're gonna feel well planted on two feet. Place your hands on your hips. You feel as if you're trying to push your pelvis down. At the same time, you feel even taller up top, which creates some space in the belt line. You're going to turn to face forward. Inhale, extend both arms up. And exhale, bend elbows like so. So they're at 90 degrees. And this is our variation of Warrior One. What makes it different from the typical Warrior One is that we've got less distance between the feet. We're still balanced, however, on our feet. And the arms are up, but we have a bend in the elbows. Let's open up to our warrior two. You're gonna inhale, extend the arms into the sky. Exhale, bring your arms down and bring your hands to your hips. We need to shift some weight into this front foot. Okay, enough where you can easily pick up that back heel and even just take a step back. We're just putting a little bit more distance between the feet, but maintain that center right here. Let's go ahead and re-extend the arm straight up. Exhale, turn your torso to the left as your arms come down to parallel. Now, as you're turning to the left, you wanna make sure your right knee doesn't also turn to the left. It's still pointing directly forward. Let's bring hands to hips. So this will be our variation of warrior two. Alrighty, and still pushing the pelvis down, nice and tall in the torso. And just to get the neck involved, just gently turn your head so you're looking maybe over the right shoulder, but don't force this. If this feels like a strain in your neck, then soften it. So maybe you're looking out more at like the corner of the room rather than, rather than right over your shoulder. One more breath. Let's free the hands. Let's take them out and up. We're just taking this in reverse. Turn to face forward. Let's bring the arms down to the hips again. Let's put pressure into this front foot or lean forward so we can pick up that back heel. Okay, now we're gonna turn that leg back in to where we originally started. Bend the knee to give you a little push to step forward so you're standing at the top of the mat. Once again, inhale, re-extend both arms all the way up. Exhale, arms return to your side. Lots of shoulder movement, and that's on purpose, okay? And just to keep them loose and mobile. Let's do the exact same sequence on the other side. So it's our variation of Warrior One and Warrior Two. Starting in Mountain Pose, soften your knees, keep them bent. Now shifting weight into your left foot. Lean forward a tiny bit, left set of toes grip to hold you in place. That should lighten the right foot, lift the heel, start stepping or tapping the foot back until it stops. 
Okay, I'm going to turn the leg out just as I'm turning my hand out and arm out. Plant the heel so you feel balanced right there. Bring hands to hips, push down. At the same time, get tall. We're making space across the belt line so you're easily able to face forward, facing the same direction as your left knee and toes. Inhale, let's extend, extend the arms all the way up. Exhale, bend elbows to 90 degrees. And there's our variation of Warrior One, which you may even do here while we're holding this Warrior One variation. Just pull the arms back a little bit. This will maintain that kind of stretch across the chest, that nice opening through the front body. This will encourage that nice opening, which will help us with more back bends. Okay, let's get ready for our Warrior Two. Inhale, let's extend the arms all the way up. Exhale, bring arms down. You can place hands on hips. I'm going to lean forward so we can put some weight into the left foot so it frees up that right foot so we can pick it up and just step back, making a little bit more space between the feet. Let's re-extend the arms straight up. Inhale as you do so. Exhale, now turn your torso towards the right side of the room, being sure your right, I'm sorry, be sure, being sure your left knee is still pointing directly forward. Arms come down to parallel for a quick second, and then we can rest the arms and shoulders by bringing hands to hips. When hands are on hips, you can continue pushing down and stay nice and tall. Nice long neck, and gently turn your head towards left shoulder. Remember not to strain. I can, I can feel this happening right now. I can feel a bit of a strain in my neck. So I want to lighten that up. So I'm just kind of looking out in another direction. And some deep breaths here. Our variation of Warrior Two. Now we will do a second version of both of those poses, Warrior One and Warrior Two. All right, let's go ahead and re-extend the arms out and then up, taking it in reverse, turning to face forward, bringing hands down to the hips again. Lean forward, put weight into this front foot, picking up that back heel, inner rotate that whole leg so you're all 10 toes, especially that back foot, 10 toes, pointing forward. Little bend of that back knee to push, step forward, feet together, then inhale, re-extend the arms all the way up, exhale, arms come down. Wonderful. Let's just check in, big circles of the shoulders, back a few times, and forward a few times. Alrighty, now we'll do our second variations of those two poses, but we're going to add some more. So we're really building our sun salutation. Okay, here's our mountain pose. You can soften the knees a little bit. Inhale, let's extend both arms all the way up, straight lines. Exhale, spread your wings out. Bend your knees, sit back into the imaginary chair. Continue folding, arms come down, belly comes closer towards thighs. If you're able, just release head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins or knees. Just rise up halfway, or just feel the extended spine. Exhale, bend your knees. Fold, slide down the legs, get lower, bend the knees more so you can get the hands on the floor and start walking the feet back. So you want weight into the hands so you can walk the feet back to the back end of your mat. And then just draw this straight line in the body. So you're lowering your hips just a bit so maybe they're at shoulder level. Plank pose, very strong posture. So really push strongly, firmly into the mat with the hands so your arms are straight and strong. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, lift your hips into the air. So return to downward facing dog. That's what's happening here. Chest sinks between the arms. I'm taking a tiny step forward with both feet. Knees stay bent, wag the tail, hips lift higher, chest sinks lower. You can always rest. If you need to rest, come down to your knees. Otherwise, we're going to continue with our lunges, our second variation of Warrior One and Warrior Two. To set this up, I'm stepping my left foot more towards the center of the mat for balance, pick up right foot, then inhale and extend the leg, reaching back through the toes. Exhale, bend this right knee, 
bring the right knee in underneath you, almost rounding your back like so, shifting the body forward so your shoulders are over your wrists, and then set the right foot down. Put weight into that foot. Let's also bring the left knee to the floor. Almost a, a quick rest. I'm pulling the weight away from the hands so I can free up the right hand. I'm reaching back to go get my right ankle so I can pick up the foot and place it up a little higher on the mat. This is going to create more distance between the feet as we get into our warrior one. Lean into the hands, re-lift the left knee. Here's that outer rotation of that back leg so I can get the heel to the floor. And I'm going to walk the hands back so I can feel my body weight shift back, again putting more weight into that back foot. I'm going to rise to fingertips to help extend spine. Continue climbing up the body. Bring your hands up to the thigh, right in the middle of the leg here. Push and hinge up, pausing at 45 degrees. Another opportunity to make sure your spine is nice and straight. If you can, free your hands. Airplane wings out to the side, and then rise up until you're perpendicular to the floor and the arms reach up into the air. Reach high and maybe a little bit more bend in this front knee. So our second version of Warrior One, you can feel the difference. More distance between the feet with this back leg turned out, maybe a stretch sensation in this left hip flexor. And of course the arms are straight up. Inhale here, exhale turn torso once again to the left side of the room as your arms come down to parallel. Being sure your right knee is still pointing directly forward. Alrighty, you can do the same thing with the head, turning the head towards the right hand. Let's add on here. We're going to shift the body forward. So we're, we're standing sideways, but angle the upper half of the body by reaching forward, leading with the right hand. You're going to rotate the arm so your right hand actually comes right to the thigh and the left hand reaching up into the air. Actively reach. You can feel this nice opening through the chest. Alrighty. Slowly bring this left hand down until it's parallel to the floor, right there. You're going to turn the arm inward, okay, so the palm is facing the back of the room. You're going to bend the elbow. I call, it, I call this a scarecrow arm. And then, or like a tin man arm and then slide the hand to your low back, right there. Now as you're able, let's maintain this nice opening so this left shoulder is pulling back to help open up through the chest. You want to feel this opening sensation rather than feeling like you're falling to the ground. You're opening up, maintaining the sideways position, even imagine you're going to turn to face the ceiling. If you want, you can carefully turn your head to face the ceiling. Maybe still facing upward, let's free that back hand. I'm turning the palm so the arm is a little bit more neutral, reaching up. Stay there. This right hand that's on the thigh, pushing into the thigh to rise back up, returning to warrior two. Drop the left arm. It's probably fatigued now, but you're going to bring it down and forward. Flip the palms up and fold. Bring hands to the floor, plant them strongly into the mat. Rise up onto your tiptoes behind you, right there, so we're in this nice runner's lunge. Push firmly into the floor with the hands, strong arms, even lift the hips a little higher. This should free up this right foot so you can slide it back into plank pose. Let's go ahead and bring the knees to the floor for a moment. Return to cat-cow. Okay, let's tuck the toe, I'm sorry, flatten the feet. Inhale, tip the chin up. Arch the back, there's our cow, back bend. Exhale into cat, rounded spine. Let's do that one more time and follow me. I'm going to add something. We're going to inhale, there's cow. Exhale into cat, but hold cat pose. We're going to get into a spinal balance. I'm going to lean over to my right hand and right knee. So I, have a, I can free up this left leg and extend it back, but keep the toes on the floor. 
Now lean into your left hand and then slide the right hand forward. Form your spider's legs with the right hand. So this is a variation of spinal balance, okay? So basically, if we were into the full pose, we would lift these limbs. We're going to do that later, but just keep the toes and fingers on the floor. So all four points are still on the ground. Breathe in, exhale. I'm just going to slide my hand back in, set the left knee down. Let's rest the hands. Tuck toes. Walk the hands towards your knees so you can free up the hands and any relief that you need to do here. All right, let's do that whole sequence on the other side. So we need to return to our downward facing dog. Hands out in front of you. Step the hands forward so your wrists are out from underneath the shoulders. Spread out your fingers. Lean into the palms. Flatten the hands into the ground. Strong arms. Tuck your toes. Inhale to cow. Exhale into cat. Hold cat. Keep pressing hands into the mat so you can lift the knees. Send your hips up into the air. Chest sinks between the arms. A tiny step forward with the feet if you need to. Keep the knees bent. Wag your tail. Send the hips up higher. Sink chest lower. Ready for the warriors. Step the right foot to center on the mat. Pick up left foot and extend the left leg straight back. It doesn't have to lift high. Exhale, bend the left knee. Bring the left knee in underneath you. Try to round your spine as best as you can. Shoulders moving over the wrists. Set the left set of toes down. The heel will be lifted. We'll set the right knee down. A lot of pressure in the hands, so pull away from the hands. So you can free up the left hand. Let's go get, get the left ankle, picking up the foot and placing it up a little higher. Replant the hands. Relift the right knee. Outwardly rotate that back leg to plant the heel into the ground. Walk your hands back to help send some weight and pressure into that back foot. I like to rise to fingertips to help extend spine so I'm pointing forward through the crown of the head. Walk both hands up to mid thigh, kind of climbing up the body. Press to help lift to our 45 degree angle. Lengthen spine again. Free your hands out to the side. Rise up until you're perpendicular to the floor. Reach straight up, lunge or bend the left knee. We've arrived in our second version of Warrior One. Noticing all the sensations in the body. Okay, feet are wider on the mat. Right leg is kind of outwardly rotated, so you might feel sensation in your right hip flexor. Straight up arms, lengthening and stretch through the sides of your body. Inhale, it's turn torso towards the right side of the room as your arms come down to parallel. Left knee remains pointing forward, reaching out strongly. Turn your head to gaze out over the left hand. Here's our warrior two. Couple of breaths here. Ready for our side angle variation. We're gonna reach forward to angle the upper half of the body. Rotate the arms. Bring the left hand right onto the thigh, just for support, and the right hand reaching straight up, and really reach up. Nice opening through the body. Maintain this nice sideways position. You're going to bring this right arm down until it's parallel to the floor. Bend your elbow. There's our tin man or scarecrow. And then slide the hand to your low back. Right here is good. Make sure you're not falling to the floor, staying quite open. If the right shoulder here feels mobile, pull it back. And even turn your head as it's able to face the ceiling. If it doesn't turn or doesn't turn this far, that's okay. Let's re-extend the right arm out and up. Reaching up, this left hand pushing into the thigh to help tip us back up. Return to warrior two. I'm going to drop the right arm, turn to face forward. Both arms forward, flip the palms up and then fold. Bring hands down to the mat, plant them firmly into the ground, lean into the hands, rise up onto your tiptoes behind you. There's our runner's lunge. 
Firm press into the mat with the hands. Straight arms lift the hips. Free the left foot, slide it back. Plank pose. Hold. Let's bring knees to the floor. Two breaths, cat cow. Inhale, tip chin up. Exhale, round. Again. Pause in a neutral tabletop posture and set up for our variation of spinal balance. I'm leaning now into my left hand and left knee, taking the weight away from the right leg so I can extend the leg but keep toes on the floor. Lean now into the right hand so it frees up the left so I can crawl or slide the left hand forward, keeping the spider's legs on the floor. And then just kind of even out the body. There's our spinal balance. This is getting us much closer to our tiger pose. All right, let's take a little breather. Let's bring this left hand back in. Set the right knee down. Tuck toes. Sit back. Walk your hands to your knees. Free up the hands. All righty. Now we are going to come back out onto the hands and knees. Feel free to bring in a blanket for a little extra padding. I'm going to go ahead and bring my blanket back out. We are going to return to that spinal balance, another version of it, and begin to create our tiger pose. We'll be on hands and knees. We'll be in that spinal balance, but then we're going to be creating a back bend with it and a slight twist. Do your best. Just follow me. Let's come back to our nice soft pad. Let's do another cat cow. Starts with cow. Inhale, look up, arch your back. Exhale, round spine, hold. Lean into your right hand and right knee. Let's extend the left leg back, keep toes on the floor. Put weight into your left hand so you can crawl the right hand forward. Okay, this is, sh should automatically start to straighten the spine. As you're able, pick up the left foot, but not very high, and same with the right hand, just like this. So you're balancing on the left hand and right knee. Bend the left knee, so you're kicking up towards the ceiling. Take your right hand, reach behind you like so. We did this standing, maybe you had your arm reaching back. Now if you're able, grab hold of your foot. Now I can't reach it, okay? and it's okay if you can't reach yours, but this is our tiger pose. If I were to catch it, I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna kinda swing my foot closer to my right hand so I can go get it, and then return here. And if I lift the foot towards the ceiling and even look forward, there's our tiger pose. If you're able to get here, that's fine. I'm lifting the foot up, I'm looking up. So there's my back bend, but because I'm holding onto opposite limbs, it's a slight twist. Let's release. Bring the foot to the floor, bring this right arm around and down to the floor, knee to the pad, sit back, ah, oh, rest. Excellent. So I'm sitting in a full hero pose right now. Ah, so that's tiger pose. Okay. So even if you weren't able to grab hold of the foot, you're still creating the essence of the posture. Okay. You're on hands and knees. You're in a slight back bend, reaching back. Okay. Opposite limbs reaching towards each other. All right. Let's do the other side. It starts with spinal balance. Do your best. Inhale, cow pose. Open the heart. There's the back bend. Exhale into cat. Hold cat. This helps to engage your core as you set yourself up. Lean into your left hand and left knee. Slide the right leg back. Keep toes on the floor. Put pressure into the right hand now so you can slide the left hand forward. Fingertips on the floor. Stay here. Center the body. Keep the core engaged. Still imagine you're doing cat pose. As you're able, pick up the right foot and then left hand. Reach. Bend the right knee. Heel coming towards backside. Left arm reaching around, reaching for the air, or maybe reaching and grabbing hold of the foot. I just kind of swing the foot 
closer to the hand so I can grab it and then take it back up and then lift up, look up. Okay, this right hand pushing into the floor. I don't want to bend that elbow, push, lift. There it is. One more breath if you're here with me and then we'll release, bring the toes to the floor, left hand around to the front, knee to the ground. Now, let's take a child's pose, taking the knees a little wider on our blankets, sitting back with the hips towards heels, extend the arms forward, and even bring the head down closer to the ground. Feel this nice release through the entire back, especially the low back, since that, that was probably the most affected in our tiger pose. Some deep breaths, broad in the back. Very well done. All right, now we're going to be moving into our closing sequence and wrapping up our practice together. Three more breaths first. Slowly come back up to hands and knees. You're going to crawl off of your blanket, set it to the side. Now we haven't used those blocks yet, so let's go ahead and get those blocks involved. You're going to take a seat. Let's get the legs around to the front. Sit in the center of your mat. Get your blocks right by your side here, and then carefully roll down onto your back. You might even bring the knees with you to your chest. Catch your knees in your hands and really create that nice curve of the spine. You might even lift your upper body, your head up towards the knees to create a little ball. Okay? And even then rock left and right or create some circles to massage the back. Again, just to help relieve that back bend, that pretty dynamic back bend, tiger pose that we just did. Okay, set your head down and then set your feet down. Keep the knees bent. Make sure you can grab your blocks. I think I'm just going to use one, however. You're going to inhale to fill up the lungs. Exhale, empty the belly. Maybe blow the air out of your mouth. Press feet into the floor to lift your hips high enough to slide your book or blocks underneath you. Just depending on how tall the props are, you might need two. I'm just using one and just turning it up a notch so I can sit right here and just really relax. Once you are situated on your prop here, just let things go. Ah, melt. So we're in this bridge pose or supported bridge pose because we're not really holding ourselves up. We're just seated basically. And we'll just take a few breaths here. Bringing relief to the body. So just kind of recall what we did to get into our featured pose with some shoulder work, preparing them to get into these back bends. So we did some back bends and forward folds going through our cat cow. We move through the sun salutes just to really open the entire body and eventually returning to hands and knees and creating the spinal balance, which involves some core work cat cow and then that final twisted back bend bind of a pose that's another feature is the bind if you're able to grab hold of the foot let's take two more breaths now press feet into the floor firmly to lift the hips high enough to remove your book or blocks set it to the side and carefully come down to the ground once you've landed go ahead and bring the knees into chest once again here maybe you want to circle the ankles just as we circle the wrist which you can do again do the same with the feet all right now lightly flex the feet holding onto the shins or knees, take the legs wide, just pulling them apart gently. You can even rest the elbows on the floor, open your palms so your knees just kind of sit in your hands, something like this. This is a, a nice version of happy baby pose 
without needing to get into the full posture. But it does provide a nice stretch in the inner legs. Let's take two more breaths. Let's bring the knees back together and we'll take a twist. Take both knees over to your left, down towards the floor, extend the right arm straight up into the air and then out to the right side of the room. That will create the twist. But also notice what's happening in the arm, shoulder, side of the body, down to the hip and low back. Hopefully bringing some relief to these parts of the body after our sequence today. Two more breaths. We'll carefully come back up to center. Catch the knees with the hands. Pause here for a moment, just so your spine has an opportunity to realign. And then we'll do the other side. So gently take the knees over to the right side. Extend the left arm straight up and then out to the left side. And there's our twist. Let's take three more breaths. And then we'll bring the knees back up to center. Catch the knees with your hands. Hold. And then we're ready for Shavasana. Set the feet down and then extend the legs out in front of you. And your arms just resting down by your side. Maybe turning your palms up and just Situate yourself so you're very comfortable. Take an inhale and just really fill yourself up. You might even feel some engagement in the body. And as you exhale, completely melt and disengage the body. So let the feet just kind of fall naturally open. Your legs relax and get heavy. It opens the hips. Your back melts into the ground, shoulders, right down through your arms and hands. You're welcome to keep your eyes opened and just gaze upward or close your eyes and gaze inward. Just as like we did at the beginning of the practice, we focused on the breath. The breath is light, but still focus on it. The rise and fall of your chest and belly. The quiet sound of the breath. Keep your focus on these simple sensations to ma maintain the sense of presence, awareness, and connection. Stay here as long as you'd like, especially if you feel completely relaxed. That is the intention. You did hard work in your practice. This is your opportunity to now rest. So stay here as long as you need to. Even as I end the practice, I'll come up to seated, end the practice, but you're welcome to stay here in Shavasana. are ready to move, rather than moving too quickly, start with breath movement. So maybe five deep breaths.
as you're breathing deeply in and out, feel movement return to your body. At first it might feel quite subtle. As you feel the movement returns, carefully and slowly roll to one side of your body. Perhaps a pause in this nurturing pose. And then press into the floor with your hands as you inhale and rise up to seated. Find a comfortable seat like you did at the beginning of your practice. Feel free to sit on your pillow or blanket. Perhaps cross your legs comfortably. Feel the re-extension of your spine. Nice relaxed shoulders. Hands can rest in your lap or on your knees. And we'll take one more breath together. Inhale, reaching out and up. Exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. Take one more full and complete breath on your own. And as we come to the close of this practice together, we bow saying, Namaste. Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.